troubleshoot things on, on the offense. In what ways did you make sure that your voice was heard in that week four period to just make sure that, that things were kind of pushing in the right direction? Yeah, uh, we had a we had multiple meetings where we would um, you know sit down and talk about things that's working for us, things that you know I like, things that I don't like, things that um, things I talked about before, like standing the flow of you know whatever the case may be. If we're running the ball for five yards, four and a half a pop, you know, just keep handing the ball off. Um, obviously, mix in, um, but stay in the flow of that and things like that. So um, you know, I would I, we just that was the meetings that we had, the sit down talks that we had. Um, and I think, um, you know, those those you know, those moments that we had, um, you know, helped us progress and uh, we got to keep going. Why do, you sense, why, okay, why do you sense those were so productive? Uh, I think I think the, the people that we have in this in this building, uh, one, whether it's the coaches um, and, you know, their ability to to understand and, you know, understand us as players and things like that. And then listen to us and adapt and also us as players um, stepping up, leading. Um, we also had things that we need to get better at practice wise, um, execution um, and things like that through walkthroughs and actually in practice. So, um, you know, there's a lot to a lot to get better at um, and, and everybody, you know, so far has done a good job and we got to keep getting better. When you were at SC last year, what did you learn from Cliff Kingsbury in the year you were together? And then when you're at home this off season and you see that the Bears are interviewing him, what's going through your head when you hear that? Yeah, uh, obviously I've, I've been around Cliff, great guy, great, great coach. Um, he's a... Um, if you go and ask all the guys over there at, at, at the Red or Commanders now, sorry. Um, I've known them as the Redskins all my life growing up there. Uh, but the Commanders, um, you know, you, you go over and ask all, all the players and um, they say they love him probably because, um, you know, he's a player's coach. And, um, and so um, knowing him, um, you know, knowing um, how much he loves football um, and things like that, it just brings, you know, brings joy to his players and things like that. So, um, you know, it was, it was, uh, you know, it was, I've texted him back and forth, um, every once in a while, like, uh, you know, great game, this and that, and, and he's done the same. So, um, it's, you know, been cool, uh, building that relationship with him, um, in college. And then obviously being a pro about to go play against him. What did you think when the bears talked to him for the coordinator job? Yeah. Uh, obviously, um, I was at that point, I guess, uh, I think uh, season was completely done, and we were um, a couple months into training. So um, talked to him, um, and and you know kept in touch with him, you know throughout that time. And uh, he communicated with me that that he was going here and uh, to to I guess um, and 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 deal with this um, uh, the the job offer. Um, and so uh, you know we kept in touch and. Didn't think much of it because um, at that time I didn't know I was going to be a bear for sure, um, and so uh, just just understood it was an option for me, option for him, and you know happy for both of us. What interactions did you have with him last season? I mean, what does a senior offensive analyst do with the quarterback of a college football team? Yeah, some like I actually don't know. I know there's a bunch of rules in college, uh, <laughs> so uh, there was there was certain things he couldn't do, certain things he could do. Um, but talking about football, talking about experiences that he's had um, as, a, as a head coach, offense coordinator, things like that um, at the pro level is, is what I got from him um, so many times, talking about it, asking him questions um, so he can give me great feedback on this next level that I, was, I knew that I was probably heading to um, at that time. And so um, that, was, that was big for me, um, being able to listen to him and then obviously build a relationship with him, um, knowing the, the, the QBs he's been around, um, you know, and, and – you know similarities in some of the offenses that I've that I've been in, or, or offense that I was in in college, and so um, you know it was it was it was great to you know have those moments with him, and um, I think it's I think it's helped me for you know these moments now. I'm curious what your relationship is with his role is more preparing you for the NFL. Uh, yeah, it's to help prepare me for the NFL. Yes. I'm curious what your relationship is with Jalen Daniels and what what you've seen of him so far, watching him early on in his career. Yeah, no, it's been it's been uh, it's been pretty cool watching him, um, his his progress from obviously Arizona State to LSU, and then now, um, and the pros balling out. Um, he's been he's been playing great um, over there with Cliff and you know all the guys they have over there. Um, and so, uh, you know, like I said, happy for him, um, and 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 great to see him balling out. You can erase the storylines though. You're you're going home. It's you know one against two in the draft. Do you get into that or do you? No. No, my job is to go uh, uh, win games on Thursdays, Sundays, and, and, and Mondays. So um, that's it. When you talk about going home, do you 
do you think of Washington, D.C. as your hometown, or is there a, a nearby town that... Yeah, so I lived in D.C. and I lived in Maryland uh, for a good portion of my life. So um, I, I classify as both, um, I would say. Um, I lived in, in, in some important times in my life. Um, I didn't just live them when I was like one or two and my parents moved. I, I lived in them um, at, at some, some, some ages that I, I, built, I built friendships, um, you know, uh, ties and things and, and, and connections too. So um, I, I, I would say I uh, connected both. What's the town in Maryland? Uh, Bowie, Maryland, and Upper Marlboro, and then uh, I lived uh, 77 H Street. And, and what do you love about those places? For yeah, they're. I think honestly, they're the they're the best places to grow up. Um, you have all different kinds of uh, diversity, um, whether it's people, um, where they're from, um, whether it's the um, you know some of the schools and things like that, um, whether it's um, you know the food um, and, and 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 so much more. So, um, and then you get a bunch of I, uh, I think it's very, uh, like, uh, it's, a, it's a cool area to grow up. You got all the monuments, you got all these different things, um, historical facts and things like that. So growing up in the area um, provides a lot of um, information, provides a lot of uh, growth, um, and I think it uh, did that for me. What is spelled different? Since you guys had those meetings and adjusted stuff on fence, what's felt different for you the last three weeks? Um, I think uh, I think the flow um, is what I've talked about multiple times. The flow of it is us being the flow, us um, understanding the flow, um, um, and 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 us staying in it. Um, whether it's from coaches and um, and players and things like that, um, I think that's the I think that's big, been the biggest contributor to to myself um, and us as an offense uh, to be able to get things going. Obviously, um, we got to be a little bit better at the you know the deep ball and things like that. Uh, myself um, and then. Um, you know, first quarter, we got we got to come out and, and be better. Uh, we've scored a bunch in, you know, second, third, and fourth quarter. Uh, but first quarter, for sure, we got to be better. So, um, you know, really excited about this opportunity and getting ready to go. How many people, people do you Daniels? have? Jaden Daniels can't play. Would you be disappointed at all that you're not getting that head-to-head -head matchup? No. Uh, I hope he plays. Um, obviously, you don't wish to see, you know, good and great players down, um, not in games. Um, uh, it only makes the game better. Uh, but no, I'm not. Uh, I'm not reliant off of uh, that matchup. On that note, we've seen quarterbacks drafted one and two overall, like throughout history, be linked together throughout their careers. A lot of head-to-head -head matchups. Like, how do you feel knowing that, you know, you guys will probably be linked together for a while as you go about this? Yeah, it feels great. Um, obviously, he's on the same side, um, the NFC side. So, um, you know, be seeing him a good amount. Um, I would say, and um, you know. Um, you know, we'll see from this game and then um, in the future. Um, I think uh, it's going to be great for, for us and uh, the battle between, you know, us as, as, as y'all want to kind of kind of talk about. Um, but uh, my job is to go out there and, um, you know, win the game for Chicago Bears. There was, a, uh, there was a question request from behind the curtain of yep. uh, here. Why, why you didn't go to Maryland. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> shout out Maryland on the win. Uh, I'm give him his props. Um, that was a tough one, uh, but but no, Maryland. Uh, I uh, love Loxley, um, but uh, I think uh, decision for myself. I just liked uh, like being around uh, whether it was Lincoln and, and all the other coaches and the players that we were uh, recruiting. Caleb, you said you don't really embrace, you don't really embrace the storyline, but is it special going back there to play in Washington for the first time? Yeah, so I've actually uh, I haven't been back. I mean, I've been back. Uh, I'd say in the past since I left, um, since I left uh, high school, I haven't been back other than I think one or two times. So uh, being able to go back um, and, and share that experience, um, you know, it's going to be great. Going to be fun, um, and uh, to come out with the win is going to be uh, most important. Yes. Well, okay. what's kind of trap? Like, how many fans do you have? How many tickets do you have to buy for people coming in for this game? Um, I use all my tickets, um, and so from there, uh, gotta gotta figure out. But um, yeah, I've used all my tickets, and uh, for for the for the people um, that are coming, and um, I'm excited for sure. Awesome, the Bears. You've had some of your uh, best moments against Washington. Do you, do you think about that going into this game? Uh. I knew somebody was going to ask you that last night. Uh, I was thinking about it. I was like, eh, 
Do I say the real answer or do I just like come up with something politically correct? Yeah, <laughs> Do both. Do both. All right. So yeah, I think about it. You know, two thirty don't go out your mind when you playing the team from last year, but uh, it's a new year and they got new people, uh, some new people. So we, we'll see what happens. What was it about that game that you felt so good that allowed you to be that good? I don't know. Uh, I could not tell you. Uh, just going out there playing free and just being me. That's what I really think I came down to. Jimmy, you see the way this offense has gotten unlocked the last few weeks. What, what did you make of it? What, what, what do you sense happened to get this, this group playing the way it has? Uh, probably just seeing the defense going out there and dominating the opponent on, on their side and us uh, not holding up on our end, so we had to turn it up a notch. And here we are, and it's finally clicking, and we just got to keep going. TJ, Kale talked a lot about the offense being in the flow. What, what does that mean for you? In the flow, you know, we'd be in a rhythm. Uh, dialing up uh, the plays and then going out there and executing it and then really not having negative plays uh, out there. So just staying in the flow of things, uh, what's called, and then using some of the tempo to marry up everything else. DJ, what was it like for you personally seeing the narrative spun early in the season that you and Caleb were having some issues and body language things, and now all of a sudden the offense is clicking and it seems like that's completely gone and out the window? I don't know. Uh, I still feel like I do the same body language things, maybe because it's winning. We winning that we everybody don't care no more. But, I mean, we don't really care. Like, I didn't care for for losing just as much as he did. So maybe the frustration was there, and it got heightened because we was losing. But it was never no bad beef between us two. The last couple of games you played have been against teams that don't have a lot of wins. You know, the commanders have five. Do you see this as a test to okay, see where we are um, compared to other teams that have playoff aspirations in, in a way that maybe the last couple didn't? Mm, I mean, yeah. Uh, you could see they got five wins for a reason. They go out there and play hard. But uh, we do the same thing, and we get paid to go get wins in our win column. So that's going to be the test. Uh, who wanted more? Cole Komet said that he's sick of noon games. Yeah. Obviously, 3 o'clock, 7 o'clock are better. Do you, do you feel the same way? Do you embrace all the hype? that goes into games like this week against Washington. Yeah, because everybody's watching. So uh, you got to go out there and be be the stars that you are on the field and go out there and put on a show. Jimmy, you talked in London about Caleb being bossy and a good how do, how do you describe that, that part of his personality and, and, and what do you make of it? Uh, he had to grow to where he can, like, uh, tell, tell everybody what's going on in the huddle and why we're doing it um, on certain things. If you see something – that he doesn't like, or he'd tell us, like, hey, make sure it's like this so we're on the same page. Like, he had to grow to that. And now you can see, like, he he bossy, but in a not, like, mean way, but, like, in his own way. So take that as you want. I mean, is, does it please you? I mean, is that oh. something you respond to? <laughs> doesn't please me, but it's, it's good to see. Uh, good to hear him out there doing that. And uh, that means he's doing growth. DJ, you talked about after the play in, uh, against the Rams, you talked about, well, we're going to, all right, we're going to do it Caleb's way now. Uh, do you feel like that's kind of indicative of how things are being uh, now? You guys are doing it. When I was saying Caleb's way, like on that uh, particular, like when we didn't connect on it, because I was thinking one way, but, yeah. you know, he got a different mindset yeah, on a things. Bigger level, you know, him when, asserting himself more in the offense, him kind of the way a veteran quarterback would insist on, I want, I want the routes done this way, I want this play done this way. Yeah, he ain't get that far yet, but yeah. So, so, uh, but he 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 will tell you, and uh, you know, it's always conversation between all of us uh, on certain things to how you see it and how we see it. Um, so, just him, Shane, and then it's trickle down to to everybody that's either a pass catcher or a runner, and you just go it that way. Does he show you like physically show you too? I know like Peyton Manning used to like go physically run the route and tell his receivers, "This is what I'm looking for." Does he do that? Uh. He tried to, but he's not like, nah, slow, slow your roll, my boy. But uh, he, he, he has show us on, like, the iPad during practice or something or, like, try to draw it on his hand, but we understand where it's coming from. How did he earn that trust? Uh, going out there and just doing his job, not turning over the ball, uh, really dialing into the playbook or for the week and just leading us the right way. Yeah, he had, he had, oh, go ahead. I remember us talking to the end of last year Thoughts all hit you up with questions about potentially there being a rookie quarterback here this year, and you basically 
said that no matter who it is, there's going to be growing pains that all of you guys are going to have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Are you surprised with the progress that this rookie quarterback has made this relatively fast? Am I surprised? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We're just playing football. Uh, I mean, his, uh, his struggles came Houston and Indy, uh, as you've seen, we all seen. And he's bounced back and been on a roll since. So I think hopefully he got that out of the way. We just go stay on his roll. He threw two picks in each of those games, and he hasn't thrown one since. Is, is that a, a function of him being more disciplined, of the offense just being better? Or the, what do you uh, credit to that? Uh, him growing, and then everybody else around him just being on the details uh, and being where we need to be uh, so that he, that doesn't happen. I know it would have been like your last year at Maryland, but was there any overlap? Like, Did you know who he was when he was in high school when you were kind of in the same area? No. Nah. I wasn't really, like, I don't really pay attention to football outside of us, uh, honestly. Um, even back then, I didn't know who Caleb was, but I heard his name ringing around, but uh, that was about it. Were you a fan of oh, last, last time I talked with you, you talked about, you know, we talked about the trust, that you were hoping Caleb saw you when they put the linebacker over you and you were hoping it got to you. Do you feel like that trust is not even a thought anymore, that you just expect that from Caleb now seven weeks into the season, that, He's kind of gotten to that level of uh, you and him have gotten on that level together. Uh, I want to say so, but we still got to build more uh, to do different things that we want to do in offense. So um, it was, it's always growing. You got to take him out to dinner and stuff. Got to wind and dine him. So yeah. Did you do anything fun over the box? Did I do anything fun? <laughs> no, I was home. <laughs> when you guys came out of India, there was a week full of trying to find answers for the offense and conversations being had. What do you think was accomplished in that stretch that has allowed you guys then to be productive since then? Uh, probably walkthroughs and practice. Like, it, it, walkthroughs done got real detailed. If you ain't out there doing the right thing, it will be seen, and uh, we're going to redo it. And that's what really has been uh, the difference right now. Who, who took charge of that, of, of making sure that those were more detailed? <laughs> the whole offense. Starting with the top-down leadership, Shane, our coaches, and then it just trickled down to everybody else. Is there any part of you that going into this Washington game, you go, I can top 230 or three times? Oh, no. It's nothing, it's nothing that's that's saying that right now, but I'll tell you later on in the week if it do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thank you. Thank you.